I am in the Laboratory of Malaria and Vector Research at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, where I'm meeting with Sanjay Desai and colleagues about their identification of malaria parasite genes involved in nutrient uptake from human plasma. Growth of malaria parasites in human erythrocytes is associated with increased host cell permeability to diverse solutes. This change is mediated by one or more ion channels, but the responsible genes were unknown. Here we used a quantitative transmittance assay for a candidate ion channel, the plasmodial surface anion channel, or PSAC. When suspended in isotonic sorbitol, infected erythrocytes undergo swelling and osmotic lysis because sorbitol has a high PSAC permeability. Uninfected red cells lack PSAC activity and do not lyse in this solution. We followed osmotic lysis kinetics in microwell plates by tracking light transmittance through a cell suspension. The time required to reach the transmittance plateau is a measure of sorbitol permeability and is conserved in human and non-human malaria parasites. Channel inhibitors reduce uptake and cell lysis permitting high-throughput screens for PSAC inhibitors. How did you use this assay in the present study? We used a transmittance assay to screen two divergent parasite lines, HB3 and DD2. Most inhibitors we found are equally effective against DD2 and HB3 channels, suggesting that much of the protein is um, conserved. However, we do find a few compounds that are isolate-specific. These compounds presumably bind to polymorphic sites on the channel. One such compound, ISPA28, is 800-fold more active against DD2 channels than those of HB3. DD2 and HB3 are the parents of an available genetic cross. So we next tracked inheritance of ISPA28 block in the cross progeny and determined that a single locus in the parasite genome accounts for PSAC block. We then used DNA transfections of gene from the mapped locus and identified CLAG 3.1 and CLAG 3.2 as the determinant of ISPA28 inhibition. These genes undergo expression switching to produce different channel variants. We also localized the gene's product to the red cell surface where PSAC activity resides. Does this mean that the CLAG3 product is itself PSAC? We are not certain whether the proteins encoded by CLAG3 are sufficient to make functional ion channels. One possibility is that the CLAG3 product is trafficked to the host's membrane where it directly forms ion channels. Another possibility is the CLAG3 product interacts with other proteins to form functional ion channels. These other proteins may be encoded by either the parasite or the host red cell. In either case, identification of CLAG3 genes as determinants of PSAC activity provides a molecular handle for studying transport and for examining the channel's precise role in parasite biology. Please see our paper in the cell for more details.